Old Bear Stories. Jolly Snow. It was cold and gray outside. Jolly Tall, the giraffe, had been gazing out of the window for days. What are you waiting for? asked Rabbit. I'm waiting for it to snow, said Jolly. It is winter, isn't it? It doesn't always snow in winter, said Rabbit. In fact, it hardly ever does, said Duck gloomily. I know where there's some snow, said Little Bear. It must be left over from last winter. I'll get it for you. Without waiting to explain, Little Bear rushed out of the room. In a moment, he was back again, carrying a large glass bubble. Inside the bubble, they could see a little house and a tree covered in a layer of tiny white snowflakes. Is that all snow does? asked Jolly, staring into the bubble. Does it just lie, does it just lie around making things whiter than usual? Of course not, said Little Bear. That wouldn't be any fun. You can make it into balls and throw it. Or slide on it, said Zebra. And jump into heaps of it, said Rabbit, and make footprints. You can build things with it too, said Duck. Goodness, said Jolly. That doesn't look like me. There doesn't look enough of it for that. Holding the glass bubble tightly, Little Bear jumped up and down. A flurry of snowflakes leaped from the tiny house and tree and rushed into the glass. Look at it now, he, he squeaked. There's still not enough to make a snowball, said Jolly. And anyway, you can't get it out, said Duck. Wait a minute, said Zebra. I know where there's lots of snow. She led the way to the kitchen where Bramwell Brown was busy making some special biscuits. That's the UK term for cookies. To stop the biscuit dough from sticking to the rolling pin, he was shaking flour from a, sh from a flour shaker. Whoopee! cried Zebra, dashing under the falling flour. I'm in a snowstorm! In no time at all, all her black stripes had almost disappeared. Rabbit tried to gather up a paw, a paw full of the flour. It's not very good for snowballs, he said. It doesn't stick together. But it's perfect for dough balls, cried Little Bear, rolling up a piece of dough and throwing it at Rabbit. The dough ball stuck to Rabbit's bottom, and it looked like an extra tail. This flower snow doesn't come off, said Zebra, jumping up and down, trying to shake herself clean. I think you're going to need a bath, said Bramwell. He filled a dish with soapy water and the snowy zebra and the snowy zebra climbed in. She began to splash about, sending bubbles flying everywhere. It's still not coming off, she grumbled. It just gets stickier and stickier. Flour and water make a sort of glue, said Duck. You'll probably have to stay white forever. That is true. That's what happens when liquid mixes with flour. It gets very sticky. No, you won't, said Bramwell kindly. We'll get you clean. All the scrubbing and splashing made even more bubbles. <gasps> Snow bubbles, cried Little Bear, jumping, up, jumping about and popping them with his paws. Hurry up, Zebra. We want to use your bath as a snow machine. After lots of rubbing and scrubbing, Zebra's stripes at last reappeared. The others wrapped her in a warm towel and looked into the bath. What have you done with all the bubbles? asked Little Bear. 
Bubbles never last, said Duck. And anyway, they would have made sloppy snow. Why don't we go and see if Old Bear has any ideas? Old Bear was in the dining room cutting out paper decorations. He'd even made paper stars, paper bells. He'd made paper stars, paper bells, and paper lanterns. He'd even made paper snowflakes. You can't really play with these, said Little Bear, trying to slide on a snowflake. No, you can't, said Old Bear, re rescuing his decoration. They're only meant for looking at. We want some snow for Jolly, said Rabbit. Snow you can play with. What about these, said Old Bear, scattering a blizzard of paper pieces into the air. Lovely, said Rabbit. And nice and slippery, too, said Little Bear, taking a run at a heap of them and skidding along on his bottom. What we need is a sledge, said Rabbit. Or Little Bear will wear out his trousers. He fetched a cardboard box, and Bramwell cut away the, sh cut away the sides. Duck tied a string to the front, and they pulled it along to test it. Now, if we had a slope, said Rabbit, we could whiz down it in the sledge. I don't think I could, said Jolly. I wouldn't fit in it. Never mind, said Bramwell. You can help with the slope. Bramwell Brown disappeared into the bedroom and came back pulling a large white sheet. He gave a corner to Jolly. Now, said Bramwell, when the others climb on, Lift up your end, and they should slide all the way down. And Rabbit, wait, Rabbit and Little Bear pushed the sledge onto the sheet and climbed in. There's only room for two, Ra said Rabbit. Don't worry, said Zebra. I'll slide on my tummy. As soon as they were ready, Little Bear called out to Jolly. One, two... Three, go! Jolly and Bramwell lifted their end of the sheet. Nothing happened. Wobble it a bit, cried Rab called Rabbit. We seem to be stuck. Jolly and Bramwell shook the sheet as hard as they could, and suddenly the toys found themselves sliding very fast to the other end. Look out! cried Little Bear as the sledge whizzed off the sheet across the room and crashed into the wall on the other side. I think we need a softer landing, said Rabbit, fluffing up his flattened fur and helping Little Bear to his feet. He piled up a heap of cushions against the wall, and then all three toys bravely climbed back onto the sheet. Ready? Steady? Go! They called to Jolly. Up went the sheet. Down went the toys, straight into the heap of cushions. As they landed, clouds of feathers puffed out of a little hole into, in one of the cushions and filled the room. Look, it's feather snow, cried Little Bear, making the hole bigger with his paw and jumping on the cushion to make more feathers escape. Very soon, all of the toys were jumping in the feathers. They rolled in them, crawled through them, and piled them in heaps. Is this like snow? asked Jolly. It's better, said Little Bear. It doesn't melt, and it doesn't make you cold. Let's put some round the windows, suggested Rabbit. Then it will look as if real snow has settled there. That just might work, Rabbit. He climbed up to the windowsill and began to pile feathers in each corner. When he reached the third window pane, 
He stopped and looked, then looked again. Somebody has already done this one, he called to the others. The window did have a white covering around the edges, but it was on the outside. It isn't feathers, cried Little Bear excitedly. It's real snow. All of the toys crowded onto the sill and stared out of the window in amazement. Now we can play outside, said Zebra. Well, actually, it looks a bit deep for me, said Little Bear. And a bit cold for me, said Old Bear. At that moment, Bramwell Brown came into the room carrying a huge plate full of his special snowflake biscuits. I think what you need is some of my snow, he said. Jolly Tall thought about the flower snow and the feather snow, the bubble snow and the paper snow. Then he looked at the real snow floating down outside. I really like all kinds of snow, he announced. But, but he added, munching a snowflake biscuits, Bramwell snow is probably the best is probably the snow I like best. <laughs> I'm glad you like it, Jolly. <laughs> the end. So remember, even if you don't have snow, what you do have is your imagination. Why, if you even have carpet, you can make snow angels or carpet angels, as the case may be. And I hope you enjoyed Old Bear Stories. If you want to hear the whole story, check out two of my playlists, Playtime, my Story Time, or Old Bear Stories. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to say Playtime. Anyway, see you later. Bye! <laughs>